Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Jizz Talking for a Sunday. We have a very special event tonight. And uh, a couple of months ago, Eric Edwards called and we had a talk. And he said that he would like to do one final interview, one last uh, hurrah, as you might call it. And I thought it'd be a good time to get all of his friends together and just talk about the career that Eric Edwards had with friends. And that's probably be the best tribute that anybody can give is to have a room full of friends. And, and Eric, that's what we're doing tonight. We're going to tell some stories. Uh, we're going to uh, maybe fill in some blanks and maybe just have a nice time for an hour. And then uh, near the end, we're going to have a special uh, little something something that has been prepared by uh, by some uh, good friends. And we're going to watch that and then we'll we'll wrap the show up. So, Eric, this is for you tonight. OK, buddy. You got me all excited with that. All right. Let, let's just start with Amber Lynn. Uh, she has called several times to make sure everything. They're having storms in California, aren't you, Amber? And it's it's wicked out there. We're having terrible storms in California, but I'm super, super honored and privileged to be here. And um, I wouldn't have missed it for anything in the world. If I cut out in the middle of the show, I will still be with you in spirit and heart. Amber, so wonderful to see you again. It you and I have a is. lot of memories. <laughs> we have some memories, don't we? And I'm glad to be here. And you showed up for me on my interview, and I couldn't have missed it for you. So I'm glad Thank to you be so here. You look great. You look mm. great. Yep. Amber, can you share Wonderful. a special a special memory between you and Eric? Well, I have my favorite picture, and my phone is cutting out, but I just wanted to say that this guy right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 This yeah. guy right here was one of the guys that rivaled my brother, Buck Adams, with his physique and his workout. Now, back in the day in the 80s, as I remember, one of the things is a lot, all the guys that were on the sets would all compete by working out. They all thought big workout buffs in the 80s. And is my phone covering this picture? I just wanted to show my favorite picture. That is wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> As one that, of the memories, look at his arms and his buff shoulders and his chest, right? What what year do you guys think that was? That you, was you know something, Amber. What? I I am so embarrassed by that particular photo. Because, you are uh, well because it looks like I'm you know trying to be buff and everything like that. You were and we were. <laughs> we were. You forget, you Eric. You used yeah, to want to be I guess, I guess you so. I guess so. <laughs> You were too pretty for words. We all hated you. You beautiful. Yes. This <laughs> well, you know, um, I think that that, that photo was, uh, was taken by a very famous photographer called Ron Raffelli at the time. Uh, he was... Uh, uh, a famous photographer and he did uh, excuse me for a second I've got to blow my nose he shot that uh, that photo along with uh, some others for free uh, and and I he uh he just said that you were such a good model. I, I wanted to shoot you, and and so I'm going to give this to you for, for nothing. I won't charge you anything for it or anything like that. And um, so that has been my kind of like my my muscle shot, if you want to call it that, uh, for years. Uh, so, uh, to me, it's kind of embarrassing, but. Uh, it's it's nice to have. Very nice. It is very nice. Let's bring in and unmute uh, another good friend. I'm so glad she's here. Uh, Veronica Hart wanted to make sure she stopped by. 
and said hi to you. Veronica, go ahead and unmute Oh, yourself gosh. and we'll uh, Hi, sweetie. How are you? Oh, <laughs> hi. Janie. Hi, How are sweetie. you? Hi. How you been? Oh, Good to see I'm, everybody. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You're looking great. Oh, Wow. thanks. You too. Back at you. <laughs> hey, we're still kicking, huh? Yeah. I, actually, I just saw um, uh, a movie of ours that uh, was uh, one of my favorites. Um, We did a lot. Gosh. Uh, do you know the one? Uh, Firestorm. No, Yes. it wasn't that one. I wasn't Thank in that you. one. Firestorm. That one. Yeah, you were in the credits for it. No, I wasn't in Firestorm. Well, if Yeah, unless you, I change the name. you, you are in a non-sexual scene. Oh, okay. Because I was, uh, for, the, for Eric's thing, that's the first time I met him on that set. And I didn't Oh, yeah? remember you on that, on that either, but I'm looking. And it says Veronica Hart credited V Hart non-sex. So Hmm, okay. maybe Cecil had you come in and, or brought in some past film or something. I don't know. Yeah, Well, you, I don't you, know. I don't know either. you Um, played that a, film you played a ran away journalist with practically who was every doing war that. there was back then. Best But Eric seems to remember you from the movie. So go ahead, Eric. I don't want to interrupt you. picture, best actor, best actress. Uh, that's that's uh, above all the movies that I have done. I think Firestorm is my favorite. And you know what? I still remember the last lines. You want to hear them? You Sure. bet. Yeah. One firestorm is enough for any man's life. Sorry. I looked Wow. through mine and it burned. It burned across the sea and sky. Ooh. It burned Yeah. the image of the girl. And wherever she is, I love her still. Yeah. That's fantastic. Very nice. That was a scene here That's, from you know what? Ro are you going by Rob or Eric on this? It's either, it's either <laughs> either or. Rob. So you know what? Well, then I knew that you were a, a genuine actor. I think we were up in Sacramento doing some some movie. And um, we were sitting around by a fireplace. And you busted out into a monologue from Long Day's Journey into Night. And I know Oh, yeah. because I used to do... the female part for um, for drama competitions and stuff. And I went, damn, this guy's a real actor. <laughs> and I've been with you uh, a lot before then. And I knew you were good, but I didn't know you were like a study You know guy. what? But, You know, it, but, it, it's still up here, too. I could well, do God it right bless now. you. You know, you might, you might be losing today, but I've completely lost yesterday. <laughs> yesterday is so gone for me. I remember a few things, but and interesting things. But uh, so you're doing damn good. I can, I can't remember any of my monologue from that. Well, that one in particular uh, Yeah. won me uh, a scholarship from ABC TV to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. So that particular scene uh, has remained in my Beezer all these, uh, these years Oh. Oh, uh, wow. simply because I was uh, out of 24,000 people, I, I was given a, uh, a scholarship to go to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Wow, Uh, congratulations. That's amazing. Yeah, I, you know, that, that was quite an honor. 24,000 people all over the country uh, auditioned. And uh, they picked 16 of us. ABC TV picked 16. Uh, and that changed my life. I went to New York and studied acting. And uh, uh, from that point on, it changed my entire life. God, you're looking good. Do you know how sexy you are? Yeah, she's known it for years. <laughs> There's somebody behind me. I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. I shouldn't say that. I, I know. You've always I know. been very, very nice to me. Thank you. 
I just wanted to. Oh, um, Bob really was my first and my last. He was my first one coming in to the business, and he was the last gentleman I got to work with on my way out. So, yeah. Wow. Excellent. That's, just, that's um, very true. Be before we started the show, we were just having a little general chat, and, and Eric said that uh, we talked about the word legend a little bit, and uh, and Mark Murray, who couldn't be with us because there's massive storms out where you guys are at. That's just like uh, in incredible out there. So anyway, Mark couldn't be on, but he certainly he, I thought he was to... on. I thought he was on briefly. Did Wasn't that Mark? That no, no. Anyway, um, uh, no. Mark says the following, Rob, you're truly in a class of your own. From Bob Wolf's basement studio, shooting loops with Linda Lovelace before there was even an adult film industry, to being one of the best performers and actors of all time you're in your work behind the camera. I can't think of anyone whose career is expansive as yours and truly deserving of the title legend. My appreciation and respect for you is immeasurable. Thank you for gifting all of us with the decades of your work. And that comes to us from Mark Murray. And uh, no. Mark is quite a guy in his own right. He's preserving those eight millimeter tapes. He wrote a, a very nice book, uh, the biography of uh, uh, Rudy Raymore, Dolomite, as you may uh, remember him, and uh, just an all around great guy. And so I wanted to make sure that uh, that Mark's comments were, were put into that. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very, 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 very much. Let's Isn't go that amazing? Yeah, let's go to Richard Pacheco for a few memories. Well, in that picture of yours that they showed earlier, um, not only are you buff and have a beautiful body, but you're fucking handsome. Your face is gorgeous. That The picture they showed after that, I've never seen a prettier guy than that. So you got the body, you got the face, and oh, wait a minute, you're a fucking trained actor. How many of those are in porn? <laughs> you're three for three and, and nobody's competing with any of those well I mean some people have a body some people have a face and some people can act you had all three going and on top of that in the big scheme of things you started in the 60s who else started in the 60s that's alive let alone hit the heights that you've hit so god damn man it, when I met you you came out to the coast and with starting in the 60s in New York. And New York is certainly the birth of the industry in, in our generations anyway. Um, but they only brought out the women. You were the only guy I remember that they brought out. Uh, I think Ron Jeremy had a hitchhike. <laughs> and I don't know how Herschel got here. But they brought you out. And you were, and I was already in the in this Anthony Spinelli, John Wagon, John um, Leslie, Don Nuzo. We were the coming force. Uh, and uh, you, who's, who's this guy? And you were quite a formidable opponent. Um, and in those days, it was competitive. So we were doing that kind of thing. I didn't really get to feel you uh, as a human being until uh, I was out of until it was over for me. But then I got to know you a little bit. And I'm I'm so sorry we didn't get to touch base when we were both together. We were in one movie together, um, Ted Paramore, uh, a pretty silly film. But that was fun to work with you. And uh, mm -hmm. I just have society nothing. With... Affairs? Was that society? What, what, one, one second. One second. What? What was that? Sex scene play. It was called sex I... play. Oh. Sex play. I was with. I played a the police detective, and you were the star of the studio. And we were trying. You were. You were hiding the fact that you were actually gay, because if that came out, the whole porn industry would be destroyed. That was the premise <laughs> of it all. Uh, I now. Now I remember that. Yeah, and it was pretty you know stupid. I, I wish. That, that we had had, you are an excellent actor. And I wish that you and I could have done other scenes together, Me you too. Know, more meaty, meaty uh, type of scenes together, Me because I, I would have loved that. You, you, uh, there were very few and far between of good actors in the industry. And, um, you're one of those really good ones. Well, I you're kind. We you're kind. Time. You're kind. You're kind. But today is me taking my hat off to you. Okay? Okay. To you also. 
to you. Kathy Brown is with us. Kathy, uh, nice to see you again. It's always great to have you a part of the show. She was here a couple weeks ago when we talked about authors. And uh, Kathy, if you want to share a memory, go ahead for uh, Eric Edwards. I've always been a little starstruck by Eric. I've loved his work. Hi, Janie. Janie Hi, is Jeff. my cousin through marriage. It's so good to see you. And you are beautiful. You just glow. I get you. Um, <laughs> thank you. Kathy, I remember you. I remember you. And it's really great that you came on. Thank you. Oh, thank you. We met in New York, and I think Rick Savage introduced us. I was very shy. I mean, I'd been on porn sets. I'd written dozens of movies. But you, I just got a little verklempt. And uh, Rick introduced us very kindly and sweetly. And he brought out the fact that we were both cancer survivors. And you gave me just the warmest hug. And you were so kind. And I will never forget that. So I just picked up my husband from the airport. He's been gone a few days. But I was like, I got to go. Eric's on. I got to I gotta say hi. So just thank you for all you've given to the industry. And, you know, you're just so wonderful for the female viewers. Guys, I guess, want to be you, right? Howie, but um, but women, you know, you were just such a gentle lover and so romantic and such a wonderful actor, and you just uh, raised the status of the industry. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank, thank you. you very much for all those compliments. That that's that's thanks. <laughs> Sean uh, Elliott is with us, and Sean, uh, you you start out early in uh, in your career with uh, a movie in, with Eric Edwards, Firestorm. Um, well, well, actually, I was a young pup. I I too was a, a mainstream actor, but I got into the adult in 1981, and I only did about eight or nine uh, movies. But you and I, Patrick, said that those movies that I've had, I've worked with like virtually everybody in the business that I was that I loved, that I, I admired. And I had made the decision on the aforementioned Firestorm that I was going to leave after that movie. And I'm looking at it here because I knew we'd have this. And I'm looking at Firestorm 1985, which, by the way, Eric Edwards was the male performer of the year in 1985, of the year. <laughs> Um, wow. <laughs> so we're on, and Firestorm won uh, five wins. Talk about today's movies versus then. One of the winnings was Best Song. <laughs> and, and and 12 yeah. uh, nominations. Coming back to you. So Coming so back I'm looking to you. At, the name. I'm sorry. What? Coming back to you. Coming back to you was the name of the song. song. And that's yeah, one of my favorite. That, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'll share with you. I just want to give you the cast, and then I'm going to give you my memory of you then, what you look like in that picture, and how I felt that I recall. So there's Ricky Hart. There was uh, Sharon Kane, Sharon Mitchell. Check this cast. Ms. Veronica Hart, uh, Tina Marie, the great Eric Edwards, George Payne, Joanna Storm, John Leslie, Kate Parker. Wow. Cecil. A big cast, and I'm on this set. Ooh, oh my God! I'm John Leslie's. I'm Joanna Storm's boyfriend, and John Leslie is her father. And Kay Parker and I have a scene to do. Are you fucking kidding me? So went into the <laughs> method, talked to little Sean. Everything was fine. So before the scene, we go out and. The, if, there was a swimming pool out there, as I recall, in this. It was, I don't know if it was on Long Island or New Jersey, maybe, but there was a pool. And I go out, and there's this tan, handsome guy. And I see him laying out naked with a sunscreen. Yeah, that was you. <laughs> with a sunscreen on him. Like, <laughs> and I'm with John Leslie. And he's treating me like the new guy, but he's going, good stuff, you'll, you'll be fine. You didn't say fucking shit to me. You didn't say a <laughs> word to me. And I was so scared to talk to you. 15 minutes you know what? I think I, I remember Richie that. Richie Hart went out too in a bathing suit. She stayed out there with you 
I don't know if any shenanigans went on because it was in between scenes, but you were just standing. As I got up to go walk away, you went like this. You took your sunglasses off and you went, break a leg. <laughs> and then you went back to Tampa. I remember. <laughs> Did the scene. I, I've never saw a, a, a statuesque and, and mainstream. So I was used to the soap opera and all that stuff. You could have walked right on to another world, which was filmed in New York at the time, as you know, or Texas, or gone on to a play. And you made your career in this. And I said, it, I, for a brief second, I thought, maybe I won't leave because you were a real star. You were a star. John Leslie was a guy, but I could relate to him because he was dark and all this. You were this waspy, handsome guy that I, I didn't grow up with guys like that. I love you as I watched your career. And late in life, when I showed up again uh, and saw you, and I said, is that the same guy? And I got to meet you. And yeah, it's not Richard's day, but I love him too. To see people that did this, that were the real guys and gals, Veronica, that did this uh, blows my mind because I was just a little cog in it. They got to work with a lot of good people, but you were the real deal. You are the real deal. I love you. You're a good guy. And uh, tonight's your night. So I do remember that. I remember it. And you're still tanned. <laughs> you <know. laughs> so that's good. <laughs> so God bless well, you. Well, thank you, Sean. Thank you so much, really. Um, I woke up this morning with a, uh, a memory that I'd like to share with you all. Um, it was... Um, When I first uh, saw myself <clears throat> on a marquee on 42nd Street, excuse me a second, this and uh, <clears throat> I used to live on 8th Avenue, just uh, 888 8th Avenue. <laughs> Oh, that was an easy address to remember when you're drunk. Um, <laughs> take, take me home. <laughs> anyway, was that Midtown? Uh, it, was, it was between 52nd and 53rd, I believe, on 8th Avenue in New York City. Uh, and it was, a, like I said, it was a very easy uh, uh, address to remember to a taxi driver, you know, take me home. Um, but in any case, um, oh, I lost my train of thought now. Um, you woke up this morning. Oh, yeah, yeah. Woke up this um, morning. Uh, with the memory of um, Linda Lovelace and how I actually started out in the industry. Uh, Back in 1969, I guess it was. Um, anyway, I uh, I was scared to death uh, as an actor. You know, going, I didn't know what to expect in this uh, uh, this industry, but um, I uh, I remember going up these stairs and meeting Linda Lovelace, the uh, goddess of this entire industry and and uh, and doing a scene with her. And from that point on, it just kind of snowballed. She would call me to see if I wanted to do another one. Uh, all the time. And I would say, well, okay, it went well. I'll do another one with you. And it just kind of snowballed from that point on. I never really sought the uh, the work. Uh, it just sort of came my way. But uh, later on, when they discovered that I could remember lines <laughs> and a script, you know, tossed me a script and I'll have it uh, shortly. Uh, then they uh, would use me quite a lot. And then, of course, came the larger budget movies, 
where I would get flown to Europe and Africa and Egypt and all, all over the world to film. And these memories are uh, just so wonderful. And I want to thank you all for being my friends throughout my career. You're here. Yeah. And we want to thank you for being here and for being then <laughs> and being tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, thank you. And, and, and Linda asked for you because you were wonderful to work with. You know, um, I can speak about what uh, a lady I think so. I, or what a female would want. And, and that's um, someone who's um, kind and considerate and um, respectful on set. And you always were a wonderful, lovely person to work with. I loved working with you. And, um, Thank you, sweetie. Thank you. you. Sweetie, because you're, you know, you're, you're kind, you're thoughtful, you're intelligent. What more could a girl ask for? <laughs> we sure had some really, really good memories, haven't we? I mean, you know, you, you look back on our careers and, and you look uh, back at the actual history of our industry. Uh, like I said, I began in 1969. And uh, did I tell you about the marquee? Yeah. Did I tell you that story already? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, well, it, Maybe I didn't. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, I I used to live at 888 8th Avenue. I'll never forget that address. Anyway, uh, it's close to Times Square. And I used to get off at uh, 42nd Street on, uh, uh, on the subway. And then I would walk home. I'd walk over to 8th Avenue and go up 8th Avenue to my, to my apartment. But as I was walking across the street uh, from the subway, here was the marquee. Eric Edwards starring in, yeah, uh, I think it was Fringe Benefits, but my name was up there on this marquee, and that fucking blew me away. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't believe that uh, I, was, I was doing summer stock somewhere. Uh, and for eight months, I think it was. And when I came back, that's what I saw. Things had changed uh, for the better, I guess, you know. And uh, but to see myself up on a on a huge marquee like that uh, just like floored me. So from that point on. Our industry took a good direction. It uh, it woke up America to our own sexuality. France and Germany, I was filming over there, and they had already uh, they had already figured it out. When I came back to the U.S., we were kind of backwards still, but we grew up, didn't we? Let's, uh, let's go to David Wall for a question. David, go ahead. Good to see you again. Hi, how are you doing, Patrick? Go ahead. Hello again, Eric. Um, so we met, um, not so much a question. Uh, we met uh, several years ago. I was out in California working, doing research on a book I have that's about to well, be out soon enough. And uh, I was... Uh, staying at Kay Parker's place and uh, spent a couple days with uh, Bill Margold. And he suddenly went into this long diatribe about Eric Edwards, how fantastic Edwards was and how much he loved Eric Edwards. We had lunch. Didn't and we, we did because he was stunned to learn that I had not met you. And he said, you get in your car, Get up in those hills. <laughs> you, 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 you meet him. So I did. I, I, I called you and 
drove up to your place and um, he said, and, and Bill had said, you have to interview him for this. Okay, great. So I figured it was going to be about a 10, I think I told you a 10, 15 minute interview. And <laughs> you had said, well, let's put it, let's put it on film. Okay, great. So you know, I set up the cameras and started this 10, 15 minute interview. Um, it clocked in at just over four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Because because uh, my good friend here decided that we were going to go through an exploration of every movie he made. <laughs> so this is this is all still on film, and in fact, um, I'm going to send you a DVD of that entire interview where wow. you go through every single one of your movies. Wonderful. Fact, but we had the we had the IMDb page up. And he went in order. And so it took, a, it was around, I think it clocks in just over four hours. Oh, wow. So, so we have that. And, and some of that actually uh, is, is in the book. And you'll see it in the book. But um, here's something. I don't know how many have gone up to, in the hills to see, to see him. But uh, here's what you get fed when you go up there. So I had coffee and a deep throat mug. And do you remember what you fed me that day? Probably not. Goose food. What did I say? We went out. We went out to feed the geese, and you had tricked me into opening my mouth, and you shoved a handful of goose food. Oh God! So <laughs> if you go, if you go, <laughs> so if you go to my Facebook page, you will see it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did, that's did you, wild. That's wild. Did yeah, you uh, laid any eggs? I, you know, huh? I missed. Huh? I asked if you laid any eggs. I did. If what? No. Didn't. You laid any eggs? <laughs> I, la I think I did. I, I, I think <laughs> I did. Uh, actually, I, a ghost, I tell you. <laughs> you know what, uh, David? I I actually. Uh, uh, saw those geese uh, once again. Uh, I, I have a doctor in uh, in Bakersfield. Uh, I think it's a foot doctor. I'm not sure, but anyway, uh, there's a pond out there by my doctor's place, and uh, I always used to like going there because it reminded me of my old pond which you remember, which is no longer there. Uh, but anyway, that pond reminded me of uh, my own pond. And I'll be darned if it wasn't the grumpy, the old goose, the old male goose. It was <laughs> grumpy and his girlfriends. They were there relocated at that pond. And I freaked out. I, and not only that, but Grumpy recognized me. Oh. He came squawking over to me and everything came up to me like like he knew me. And I've heard Those that, geese uh, meant the world to you. Geese do have long-term memories. I've heard that before. But uh, that really surprised me. Touched me. Well, when, when Bill Margold told me to go up there to your house... What I found was the kindest, most noble gentleman I may have ever met in my life. Oh. And uh, just to know you is a blessing. Yep. Same goes that. for you. Very sweet. Mm -hmm. you're, you're all very, very wonderful people. And I'm so blessed with knowing all of you. All of you. I had uh, uh, you. You just... <laughs> I, I just talked to Bill about my heart. Uh, um, I talked to you Bill. Re you him. really do. You melt my heart. Yeah. Thank you. I talked to Bill about getting uh, Eric's autograph, and uh, Bill says, "Why on God's green earth would anybody want anybody's autograph?" <clears throat> he says, "The the stupidest damn thing I've ever heard of." Later that night. Eric Edwards called me, says, Bill Margold said to call you because you wanted my autograph. <laughs> anyway, so then we I sent him some pictures. Y'all, 
Bill may have hated it or didn't care for it, but he sure lined me up with a lot of people who signed some stuff for me. So I really do appreciate that. Um, this past uh, a year ago, uh, we were in uh, Los Angeles. And but in 2018, uh, I thought, you know, I wonder what would happen if I just invited some people uh, to come to a pizza party. And so anyway, I invited some friends to a pizza party. And Eric was so nice to, to be there. Uh, his son had the job of driving him down from the mountains to, to enjoy the pizza. And we had a, a very, very fun time. And then so it wasn't too long after that. I did it again and did it again and did it again. And then uh, Claire was a part of things. And so anyway, oops, I'll unmute Claire. And we'll, uh, so I invited Claire to come. And uh, Eric got to meet Claire too. Claire, go ahead. Yeah, I actually, I pulled up the picture. Oh, wow. From that. And that was, yeah, that was really special for me. I just wanted to say, um, Eric, you are, you're emblematic of everything that I like about golden age porn. It's, there's, you bring a real warmth and it, it feels weird to use this word, but a wholesomeness almost. There's, you can tell that your love for women is really genuine and it just it comes through in all your performances and in your directing and even meeting you you're just you're such a kind warm person you were exactly how i expected you to be and um it was funny i was actually watching water power the other day and i was almost shocked to see see you in that film <laughs> cuz that's definitely not not a wholesome even by porn standards like that one has an edge to it um but yeah, I just wanted to say, like, you know, I the the porn I grew up with. I, I was born in '86, so like, I I came of age just as the internet porn started to take off, and it's so different from the work that you did. And when I found Golden Age porn and like found the films that you were in, there's just there's such a a welcoming, warm, sensual energy that I that I feel is is lacking in modern porn, and I just I just want to you know. Thank you for your work, and I really enjoy it. You know, one one movie that you might have seen, but it's uh, kind of my all-time favorite film, and not only because it got Best Picture and I got Best Actor. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and Best Song also. Uh, which is a beautiful, beautiful love song, is Firestorm. Have you ever seen that? I haven't. I actually wrote it down to watch it, though. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Now, uh, hmm. I don't know why that one in, in particular is my favorite, but uh, I think all the above, the, the musical score, the, the story. Uh, of a love that was probably buried deep in my own heart wanting to surface. And uh, I think I expressed it in that film. You were great. Thanks, son. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Um, another person I want to recognize and a big thank you was uh, Charles. Charles came to get you a couple times up there in the mountains and drove you down and drove you back in a rainstorm and everything else. And, and Charles, really, thank you for doing that for us. You're very welcome. I had so much fun with Eric Edwards. We did lunch one day. It was spectacular. And the pizza parties were so much fun. <laughs> and the weirdest, the weirdest story I have was going to one of the pizza parties and coming back and it was raining pouring buckets in LA and I said to Eric I said I'm not going to drive back you know up into the hills in this weather um and I said you know let's get I'm going to get a hotel room and we go to the hotel and we pull in and Eric says I filmed the movie here and I was stunned <laughs> absolutely stunned <laughs> done and i'm like oh this is karma this is so cool and you know 
and he proceeds to tell me all about the movie and the plot and you know and then we go and then the next day when i drive him back he shows me the movie the specific movie and i can't remember what it was um what the movie was hotel suites motel hotel suites. suites i knew it was hotel something but i couldn't remember the rest of it and it is it's a wonderful movie and you know one of the things i do love absolutely i will echo claire's sentiment about golden age born is the acting and the storyline and then it flows from the story flows as it should and that's one of the things that you know that's where I also like the new, the kind of 90s satire porn, because that was entertaining as well. But anyway, but it was so much fun spending time with Eric Edwards and just awesome time and, you know, love him to death. Thank you, Charles. Thank you You're so much. You're very welcome. And, and you know what? Motel Suites uh, is pretty much a, uh, one of my favorite films that that I've ever done. Um, I, I used to write, produce, and direct um, movies that I uh, considered for uh, women, for women. Uh, and uh, actually, when when I would go on tour, I would ask the women in the audience, "What would you like to see in in adult films?" And they would also, they would all say, uh, better lighting, more plot. Uh, and so I took all this into consideration. And uh, uh, that's what I would do with, with my movies. And um, I, I guess uh, Mirage was one of my favorite films that I, that I, made for women um, uh, let's see now there was another one uh, soft warm rain is is another film of mine that i uh, kind of made for women uh, but basically what i what i did was i, I took everything that women would have to say to me and uh and i would uh incorporate that in into my uh, into my scripts so uh, hopefully uh, they will live on and the ladies will enjoy my work they certainly will that would kelly richards just popped on kelly how are you doing tonight i'm good how are you patrick good you have a, a special memory anything you'd like to say to eric edwards tonight uh, oh well, eric's one of my favorites hi eric how are you honey Oh, Eric, uh, we, uh, I did a few films with him and, um, uh, he's just, he's just an awesome guy. Very genuine. Um, I love him to death and I miss him and yeah, he's part of my family. Yeah. We're, we're all getting older and it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's for me, it's hard to accept. Like I'm, you know. I just don't want to let anybody go, I guess. <laughs> well, I tell you what. Getting older is a is a good thing because you have all those memories and everything of your life and you put it all together and you just weigh it out and try to enjoy what you've had because we won't be here much longer. And those memories are special. Yeah. So enjoy them. For sure. I'm going to go to a couple other people before we have our little uh, surprise here. Adam, go ahead. Uh, question for Eric Edwards. Oh, well, thank you, Patrick. I really wasn't expecting to say anything, but Eric Edwards, let me just say this very quickly. Uh, I used to be the uh, sort of the head guy of a large group of classic porn fans on Twitter. Uh, that has kind of broken up over the years, especially in recent years. But uh, we did a poll one time who was everybody's favorite uh, male star from that early classic era. And, you know, a lot of people mentioned a lot of names, but the name that kept coming up as everybody's favorite was Eric Edwards. And 
It was the actor. It was the acting, of course. Uh, it was the directing. Everybody loved the films that she directed. So um, the newer fans, and these are fans of stuff from like 95 to 05, and even the fans of that era still recognize your great work. So um, I just wanted to throw that in. And thank you, Eric. It, it, it's it's an honor to be among so many uh, legends. This thank year. you. Thank you. And oh, um, you're, making me, you're making me blush. <laughs> oh, and thank you, Patrick. I appreciate the opportunity as always. You bet. We'll be we'll be putting this on uh, on YouTube on the uh, the Just Talking YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe to that. You'll be able to see this, and then you'll also see the video as well. We're going to have here in just a bit. I want to get to a couple more people. Amber, go ahead. Hi. I just want to jump in here for a second. I didn't get to finish, and I just wanted to say um, it says that Amber Lynn and Eric Edwards have co-starred in thirty five films together wow. delivering wow. compelling performances and I wanted to say to you that when I was young coming into the industry um, there were certain people in the industry who embraced me and helped me cultivate myself as a better performer and a better actress and I didn't think of myself as an actress coming into what the outsiders were saying was the porn sex industry. And, you know, there's several people in this room tonight, and you are definitely one of them who, when I was on set with you, I was a better actress I was a better performer and I appreciated my position in the industry. And I just wanted to say thank you for being that for me. You were a great example to me and you were just such a loving, decent, beautiful man. And I, I just really owe you a thank you and a gratitude. Amber, well, you're a very special lady to me too. Uh, and not only that, but you built me. I know that's a strange thing to say, but do you remember that movie where you built me as a robot? Yes, and wasn't it an ultimate lover? Because we were in major films together. We were in Corporate Assets. We were yep. in Ultimate Lover. We were in Tracy Takes Paris. There's like some really big budget films that we were, many of us were all in together that were significant uh, projects. You know, so. yeah. it, it was the ultimate lover is the one that I was trying to think of because uh, uh, that was a very unusual role for me uh, to not have any emotion or whatever. I, I Basically, I was a, a robot that you built and uh it was a fun, it was a fun movie and um but we did a lot of other special ones that you and I yeah uh we did a lot of good movies together did a lot of good movies a lot of good work work that i'm proud of to this day and thank you oh i love you i love you too babe Thank you, uh, Amber, for coming by, and, and thank you for uh, for sharing. That's really, really special, and it's really nice. Patrick, Patrick, just one thing, if I may. Yeah. In mainstream acting, people work together, Tracy Hepburn. Nobody's worked that much. I would venture to guess that might be a record. You have more than emotional attachment. If you're in 30, 30, think about that, 35 movies, 35 movies together. I That blows my mind. That is a connection, a team that I don't recall anybody doing that much together where they're they're working together. Amber that, that's, and pretty, I, that's pretty awesome. Amber, cool. Amber and I are 35 movies. 35 together? movies together, you and her, and probably wow. worked intimately in most of them. That's an amazing amount of connection <laughs> in all sorts. So I just want to touch up and let you know that you don't hear that ever. That that is pretty incredible, actually. I didn't know it was that many, but uh, and every single one uh, was a memorable experience. Um, is especially the one where she built me as a robot. I'll <laughs> never forget that. 
Okay. Let's go to Lorenzo real quick, then we'll have something real special to come up here. Lorenzo, go ahead. Yeah, for Eric, I don't know you personally, but I know you. Um, I worked law enforcement in the 80s, and we worked in a section that had to monitor all of the porno movies and decide which ones were falling under the regulations and everything. So we got to sit and watch every movie, and the stars that I see now, I saw at the beginning. You know, we got our favorites, Veronica Hart, Amber Lynn, Kelly Richards. We, we watched you from the beginning, and also Eric. And one thing about your style, there was always some class and the plot. You know, you really could do acting in anything like that. So when we would see other movies that really didn't make it to that level, I mean, we got bothered by that, you know, even, even though we didn't pull them from the shelves. But your style was always there. So I just want to uh, give you that respect of the class that you've always shown for the industry and the others that you've worked with you know, and brought along like that. So it's a pleasure to see people now that we had to see at the beginning. And then I get to see you all, you all now at this, at this phase in your lives. So uh, I you. just appreciate, appreciate the work that you did. And you even had fans, you, thank, you thank had fans you so in law much. enforcement. <laughs> Good thoughts. Yeah. That's, that's okay. great. Thank you so much. Thank what, you. What Patrick, I want to add something. Yeah, sure. Um, Eric, this is a story I don't think you've heard. Um, John Leslie and I were out having dinner with Jamie Gillis one night and it was after shooting and Jamie was, had a few glasses of wine and he was telling a story about he was doing an oral sex scene and the director, cameraman, same person, who was shooting the scene and he kept stopping shooting. He said, Jamie, your fucking nose is in the way. Move your nose. <laughs> and this happened three or four times and Jamie's getting really pissed. He says, look. You want a pug nose? You get Eric Edwards. You want a Jew? I'm your man. <laughs> I remember that story. I remember that. That is so funny. So what I'm okay. Gonna do is uh, I'm going to mute everybody except uh, Luke and Alexandra, and uh, we're going to have a little uh, little special 12 minute uh, feature here, and uh, it's it's well worth waiting and watching and. Uh, uh, Luke, go ahead and introduce us for us, then we'll we'll flip that on and and we'll we'll run with that. I will first. I I think Alex wants to just give some greetings. Oh to yeah, Eric. I just I just want to say thank you so much for giving back to the industry and putting the class and ass. <laughs> and you know what? You still look sexy as ever. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you so much, sweet. I, I miss you guys. Uh, I miss you too. You're, you're, you know, every time we get together, I feel as if we're lifelong friends. I, I know, I know. Um, I, I still read the article and everything that that we have, uh, um, and it it takes me back. All the memories and everything come flowing back, and I just, I, I wish we could see each other one more time. Well, I think we can, make, this way. I can make that happen. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you a quick little story. You know, I lived very close to Times Square when I was a young boy. And when I graduated high school in 1976, uh, you could do anything you wanted to at 18 years old. You could drink, you could vote, you could go to, you know, Vietnam, you could do whatever you wanted to do. So I was one of those young boys who was out there reading that marquee on 8th Avenue. And uh, I think the greatest distinction between your entire body of work and what exists with people today is that it was shown in a real theater on a, on a, on a full, you know, panoramic screen. And, that had so much more impact than, you know, watching it on an iPhone. Yeah. So I want to bring you back to a moment when our dear friend who has passed, uh, Cass Pally and I came up to, to speak with you and, and interview you. And you asked me to, uh, to capture some moments for future benefit. That was in 2017. 
Wow. So for your consideration, Patrick has the following, and I offer it with all our love and, uh, and honor. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Be very careful of this book because the pages just fall apart. Sort of like me. I'm Eric Edwards, and uh, this was my wife. And she's also the star in A Touch of Gene. I met Kathy at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. I had won a scholarship uh, with ABC TV, um, and I got the telegrams and everything. They said 25,000 um, people were, were uh, auditioned for this scholarship, and I was one of 16 that were picked to go to the academy. So I left Baylor, who I was studying acting and I went to New York and she just happened to be there in uh, my first class of the day which was called movement in our leotards and tights and uh, I remember our instruction from the uh, teacher which was look around and study everybody else in the room. Look at their posture, look at what they're doing, and then try to be as extremely different as you possibly can. And everybody else, your mission here is to stand up. So I looked around, I looked at Kathy, she looked at me, we smiled, and just looked at everybody else trying to figure out what to do. And I just sat there, being different. <laughs> Later on, I became very different, but we won't talk about that now. Anyway, there she is. And uh, these are of me and my younger days. Kathy's acting skills actually came from the academy as did mine a lot of famous people uh, went through the academy robert redford was in a class before me i was impressed with that henry fonda came to speak to us and i was totally impressed with that this was one of my first professional shots anyway i'm not sure of my age there but i look to be about uh uh, after the academy, what are they, about uh, 21, 22? And I'm out in, in Hollywood trying to get some work through William Morris, the branch out there. I was signed in New York. Uh, so I figured I'd better get my ass up to California and maybe try some film work. Well, I got a few commercials. You've probably seen one of them uh, that survived the times. Uh, it's a close up toothpaste promotion. Um, but I did others also in some modeling work. But I never really got any um, good feedback as far as roles go. I was too young and naive, and I didn't know how to handle myself. Oh, hey. Oh. Oh, how did Kathy get into the adult business? I think I was the culprit. I had done... A couple of loops. Well, let me back up a bit. Kathy and I uh, didn't get along together very well. We were kind of incompatible sexually. So we got into the swinging scene. And uh, not very heavily at first. It was just kind of like experimental. Uh, however, that, that gave me a little leeway to answer an ad in Screw Magazine asking for models. Six I, I sent my photo in and six months later I got a call from some guy, well, it was Ted Snyder, I believe, 
And he asked me, do uh, you think you can perform? You know, like get it up. And of course I was used to orgies at that time. So I figured, sure, I'll go over and I can do it. It turns out it was with Linda Lovelace and another girl, a redhead, very cute. And I had no problem at all. Did the loop and uh, she would call me and ask me if I'd like to work again, but we did a good job together and she's got another gig. Would I like to do it with her? I said, sure, fine, okay. But I never sought the work, I never called her. My wife was asking about it and how it was. And I said, um, well, it's a pretty easy gig and it pays you $50, I only get 40. But um, I didn't know why the girl spent more money than the guy. So hey, it was fun anyway. And it was, uh, back then it paid the rent. So her first loop, was uh, with Linda and me as a three-way. And then it just kind of snowballed. One loop followed another. And, and she didn't do too many of them at all, maybe half a dozen before she got into the feature films of Jeannie. She was in, uh, let's see, seven of Joe Sano's movies. I did two in Europe, and then the two of us did seven uh, wonderful movies, enjoying his humor and he enjoying in turn us knowing our lines <laughs> so we could get it in one take. Those were the days. Kathy didn't do too many uh, loops or even hardcore features, uh, for that matter. She enjoyed um, uh, doing the films for Joe and Peggy uh, simply because they were softcore. But because of our swinging situation, hardcore was, uh, was okay with us. My relationship with Kathy was uh, very loving. She was my best friend, all the way up until her death in 1990. She was a great girl, good actress, a lot of fun, bubbly. We went on a lot of trips together, and we enjoyed life together. I would sum up my career in the adult industry as enjoyable, therapeutic, and just a uh, oh, hell of a lot of fun. Plus it gave me a, a really great chance to explore characters. Not too many people would give me roles where I could uh, play a character. Most of the time I was uh, like the boy next door and very occasionally I'd get to grease my hair down and play a tough New York guy. You know, uh, so yeah, I got a chance and, uh, to do all these weird characters that I wouldn't be able to do otherwise. And once I did that, um, more characters would be thrown my way. So therapeutically, since I had a little problem with my wife, uh, in the very beginnings of our relationship and, and we were just incompatible. I was feeling like it was my fault. Like, why am I not turning you on? And uh, the business made me discover that women were attracted to me. And that made me feel good. So I loved Kathy but I just wasn't turned on to her and vice versa. So the business actually was very therapeutic. It, it got me, um, it got me sexually off, so to speak. And I found out that I'm attractive, you know, I'm attractive. Women like me. 
and they enjoyed having sex with me because I was just the right size, not too big, not too small. They, and I got paid for it. And I was shipped off to Europe and everything like that. I was having the time of my life. That's what I think about adult films. <laughs> but I look back on it now and I wouldn't trade those days for anything. It made me who I am today. Let me just say this to anyone who's out there listening. Having kids is the, the most important thing you can do in life and the most gratifying to pass on yourself in not just genetics, but also what's in here. Pass that. You don't have to be sorry that you did. Because what's in your heart, no matter if you're rich or poor, what's in your heart is the most important thing in life. Good for you. You, Tanner. Tyler, remember me as a loving dad. Raising the two of you was probably the biggest joy of my life. Hopefully you'll understand that I forget things and I'm getting older and just be patient with me. I just wanted to let you know how I felt, what I was going through when you guys were born. And uh, <clears throat> it's going to be... Uh, something interesting to reflect back on. But I'm doing this tape so that you will watch it and possibly get a little deeper uh, understanding of what went down in the last 30 years. Probably more by the time you look at this. <laughs> God knows how long I'm going to hang around this earth. <laughs> All right, that's it. Oh, very, very good, uh, good show there, Luke. Thank you so much for uh, bringing that up for us and uh, and making that a part of our show tonight. Uh, very, very nice. There was music on there. I don't think it came through on the stream for some reason. Okay. So, um, but thank you very much. It was a privilege we, too. There's a lot more of it as uh, Walt, Walt was talking about earlier i think is his name <laughs> it was a very long interview and we tried to condense it down for you guys hope it wasn't too long eric we love you um i'm so glad we got to do this while you're here uh to enjoy it with us as opposed to you know having this be a celebration of life after you're gone so i love you i'll see you soon and uh it's funny, I think you wore almost the same shirt in the interview as you're wearing today. So when I come <laughs> to you, I'm going to bring you up a brand new, like, completely different red shirt. Or okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the nice compliments. Uh, I was kind of lost here for, for a little while, trying to figure out uh, all these uh, uh, buttons to push and everything like that. So I hope I didn't lose you all. But um, I heard pretty much everything, and uh, I really appreciate what you all had to say. I, you know, when I when I look back on, on my career and and uh, how it all began, um, Well, it, it's it. It was very. Uh, 
very unusual because uh, our, our society was uh, going through a big change at that particular time. When I went abroad and, and filmed in uh, uh, France and Germany and uh, places like that, I discovered that uh, the United States was a little behind the times when it when it uh, came to sexuality and uh, so I think that uh, we as a, a, a group of of people who appreciate uh, adult films and stuff like that we woke up uh, our country uh, to the uh, to the effect that uh, we like this kind of stuff. Hey, it's okay, and um, I'm glad to have been a big part of it. Okay, I appreciate that. And uh, uh, again, uh, Sh uh, Sharon Mitchell and uh, John Martin would have liked to have been here, but the weather, I guess, is. Uh, very very bad in their area their internet won't stay up and uh, they're having all kinds of problems but they both uh, certainly share their love for you and Patrick, uh, can i say something before you and please yep yep go ahead i didn't have an opportunity to really collect my thoughts because i had kind of just jumped in but i wanted to share with eric i i know you remember the orient express but i want to you know extend my gratitude because i was very young when i came into the industry and I was very intimidated. And with you and Herschel and John Leslie and, and Amber and all the ones I was intimidated by, you made it feel so comfortable and you welcomed me into your, you know, your Billy. family. And I love you to death. I absolutely love you. And I want to thank you. And I'm so grateful for you. And just my heart overwhelms. And <laughs> Billy. Kelly, 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 I just saw us in uh, Lost on the Orient Express yeah, just yeah. the other night. Uh, and and it's a wonderful, wonderful film. Uh, so much fun. And yeah, we do go way back. Back in the days of uh, big budget. And uh, I mean, that, that train set alone. <laughs> Uh, I mean that was that was incredible that that thing. Uh, that was the a great scene. <laughs> there was that was the original was train. Uh, yeah, the the original train set for for the very very first. Uh, uh, what was it called? Uh, something. Oh, the Orient Express. Uh, okay, so it, it was the very train set that we used, that very same one. And uh, that was a blast. We had fun back in those days. Okay, I've got two Patricks on. Let's go to Patrick C. I'll unmute you and we'll uh, kind of get things wrapped up here a little bit with uh, Eric Edwards. It's been a great night. Appreciate everybody. Patrick, go ahead. <laughs> Well, Eric, I just wanted to say uh, thank you for everything that you've done and just a really, really uh, uh, great presence. Um, and um, I, I really I really didn't have anything to say other than uh, it's just been wonderful to sit here and listen to all the love uh, being poured your way. It's very well deserved. Um, and uh, I, I have uh, appreciated seeing you in so many films and uh, all the work that you've done. And uh, it's just been an honor to sit and listen to everybody spend stories with you. And uh, it's just a well-deserved honor. And uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much. Really, really. I, I, I'm glad that you appreciate the, uh, the work that I've done. Um, it's kind of strange because I am going through uh, a lot of my movies that uh, people have sent me on DVDs and stuff. And uh, I just saw one last night called Motel Suites uh, that I wrote, produced, and directed. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but uh, it's a cute little movie. You might want to check it out. 
All right, let's uh, let's knock another one of these Patricks out. Patrick F, go ahead. Oops, I hit the mute. Go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and uh, say hi to Eric. Hey, Eric. Hi. So, oh my gosh, it's Patrick Fogarty. You know hey, how huh? much I love you. You know how much I love you. How's the how's the ball game business going? It's going great, but I just want to share not a an experience from any of your movies, but I don't know if you remember this. When we went to Monterey about six or seven years ago, and we met the nice older lady who was on vacation with her daughters, her grown daughters. Do you remember this? Yes. We yes, I do. Talking with them and we were talking about you being an actor. And one day we were standing to get a picture with the family and one of the daughters turned and looked at you and went, I know who you are. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> oh, not, not really, but kind of. <laughs> and she was, she was with when it comes to it, she was when it comes to embarrassing moments, uh, one tends <laughs> no. to want to it was a, it was a, it was a great moment because here was this <laughs> nice looking suburban family, you know, very, you know, waspy white bread, uh, but she sure as heck recognized you. I uh, yeah, I, I I I remember that and uh it always embarrasses me when somebody recognizes me. <laughs> uh, I I don't, especially a woman uh, uh but that in itself is the uh, the extreme compliment. That, it was. Uh, yeah. It was a great compliment. It was a great moment. I loved it. <laughs> so, you. how's your weather up there in San Fran? Well, like Patrick said, uh, we're having storms and wind and all sorts of stuff here. So, I'm just glad that I haven't lost my power yet and I could be here for this great tribute to you. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, I'm. I'm having a blast. This is uh, very, very wonderful, and I thank Patrick for it. Let's go to uh, Alex. Go ahead real quick, Alex. Awesome. Thank you for uh, having me. Uh, hi, Eric. Um, I was just wondering, what is your favorite piece of advice that you've gotten? A piece of advice that I have gotten? Yep. Well, tell you the truth, I'm, I'm usually the person to give out the good advice. But I would say uh, probably enjoy life. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Joshua, real quick uh, for Eric. Hey, hi, Eric. It's good to see you again and talk to you. And I just wanted to say um, it really is an honor to be here and and, and celebrate your career. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to say uh, as a filmmaker, uh, I'm greatly inspired by your films that have been recently restored by Vinegar Syndrome. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I love them. You know, they're, they're great. Okay. Uh, can I ask uh, which one you've seen recently that has been restored? Yeah, Sweet Young Foxes and The Young Like It Hot, the 4K double combo release is phenomenal. And they Oh, did yeah. Great okay. Great job. Yeah. Good Thank movies. You. Good movies. Uh, might I recommend my favorite uh, uh, motel suites? Okay. All right, it's Good. one that I I wrote, produced, and directed. Uh, I just saw it last night, and uh, I, I got a kick out of my humor. <laughs> uh, you might also just remember the coffee pot, pouring the coffee. <laughs> If go. you happen, yeah, check it out. I, I couldn't leave out James. James, go ahead for a quick comment for Eric. All right, wonderful to meet you, Eric. Uh, you know, we know each other from Facebook. Um, I'm just going to just quickly say what my favorite movie was, and it was the one that Amber uh, said uh, a moment ago was Ultimate Lover, mainly because it had, I just love the concept of that movie. It's just a nice, funny movie, sort of a comedy. And, Which one? Uh, it was sorry, ultimate, which one? ultimate lover. Oh, ultimate yeah, lover. Yeah, yeah, where, yeah. yeah where, you, where Amber made a, you were the robot that Amber made exactly, and uh, also it had a great cover to it. Also with Tracy Adams on the front and Nina Hartley. 
<laughs> you know, what was what was interesting about that particular role is the fact that I'd, I'd never played a, a robot before. So uh, I, I had to kind of uh, work on that because you can't show any kind of emotion or any kind of uh, uh, knowledge of what's going on around you or whatever. And um, yeah, so uh, it, it was actually a very challenging kind of uh, role, which I enjoyed doing. Yeah, well, it was uh, it, it was made for it was made as a comedy, and so it, it, you, really, mm -hmm. you guys really you guys really played it up, and it was a great it was a great that's my favorite. So thank you, thank you, that. Sean. Let's uh, unmute you. Go to you real quick for a comment for Eric Edwards. Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but um, I just want to thank Patrick you for setting this up, and Mr. Edwards for uh, for your whole career. When I was watching these things, when I shouldn't have uh, early age, you were one of the ones that stood out um and uh it's just such an honor to uh to actually get to experience this be a fly on the wall for for this wonderful thing and and again thank you for your career um and wish you the best of luck thank you sean thank you thank you so much uh you know it, it has been a blast for me um i i i look back on when i first started uh, and it was like 1969 Oh, uh, yeah, if you can imagine that. Uh, I did a, a, a scene with uh, Linda Lovelace. Uh, I don't know if that name is even still around anymore, but uh, she was my first in the, in the industry. Uh, no, remind you. me if I've told this story already, okay? Yeah, is, is this brand new? That's fine. Oh, okay. Okay, well, Linda Lovelace, yeah. Uh, and contrary to uh, her book, uh, which I forget the name of it was, but uh, in any case, she mentions me in, in her book. Uh, that uh, she was my first, actually, in the industry. I didn't really seek the work, uh, but it just happened to to uh, come my way with uh, a guy named Ted Snyder, I believe his name was. And he ah. said, do you, do you think you can get it up? And I said, sure, sure. So uh, I, I walked over to his uh, studio on, I think it was uh, 8th Avenue or something like that. And uh, in any case, uh, it was with Linda Lovelace, and she kept calling me after that one scene. Do you want to do it again? We worked well together. And I said, okay, sure, sure. I never really sought the work myself. She would call me, and uh, she would set up all these uh, shoots. I don't know how many I did back then, but uh, a couple of dozen or so. And then along came the talkies and the features. Uh -huh. They nice. discovered that, hey, I could remember my lines. Hmm. <laughs> I could act. Yeah, there you go. Let's go to Eric L for a, a comment here. Eric, go ahead. Oh, not too much. I just say hi to you there. I guess remember meeting we met at the Legend of Erotica before just briefly there. So fun time there, too, when you get your imprints put in there. All right, good enough. I'd like to uh, ask Amber if she could just uh, kind of put a nice little bow on this and, and wrap things up for our good friend, Eric Edwards. Amber, could you just take that away and handle that for us? We'll get you unmuted here. Doesn't look like it. She's, she's, we need to unmute her. So, oh, oh unmute Amber. She's talking, but we need to unmute. Oh, there I see her. There she is. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it, yeah, she's muted. I'm hitting the unmute button. Is it working now? There we go, Amber. You got it. Amber, if you could put a nice bow on this tonight, I would I would really appreciate that. Okay. 
You know, when I started tonight, I said it's my honor and my privilege to be here. And I want you to know, everybody here, it is my honor and privilege to be here tonight. Um, thank you for all of the wonderful things that you gave to our industry, not just me as an individual, as a co-star, as co-talent, co-performer, but what you brought to our industry and what you what I learned by knowing you. You made me a better performer and a better actor, and even in a lot of ways, a better person having known you. And I'm grateful for that and grateful for you. And thank you. Wow, wow, thank you so much, Amber. I mean, the ultimate compliments uh wow <laughs> you blew me away and and i you know you and i have done some some really good films back in the old days and stuff and and uh, uh gosh i remember I jamie just... commented about the nose thing that howie brought up about the nose because i he said who are you working with tomorrow and I said, Eric Edwards. And he said, oh, he's such a gorgeous man. He said, and you two will look great together because you both got the same little puggy nose. <laughs> and I didn't remember that until how he said that about Jamie telling the story, which really is funny because it must have mattered to Jamie <laughs> that you had this great face and this great nose because he said that in in a very joking, loving way. But it was funny. He said, you two yeah. will look great together because you both have the same puggy little nose. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, everybody has made fun of my nose. But, uh, it, it, hey, it's there. It smells pretty good. <laughs> so um, I just saw a movie of ours, um, uh, Ultimate Lover. Did I mention that? Mm -hmm. Oh, Okay. Uh, and yeah, I played I, I, the bride. I was you were the kind of the Frankenstein character, and I was the bride of Frankenstein character. So the yes. old lover was like these two ultimate humans or robots or whatever we were supposed to be. And then yeah, right, they right. created me, and then I created you. So yeah, yeah. it's a great plot. Yeah, it, it, it was a pretty good movie. And uh, actually, I think I'm in love with the uh, the theme song. Uh, sort of rings a bell here. Uh, I don't know why, but maybe maybe it was like really pretty music. Okay. Well, anyway, it's it's a fairly, it's a pretty good movie. Yeah. I appreciate everybody being here. Really, a, a great night, an enjoyable night, a heartfelt night. I really do appreciate everybody being here. We'll have the replay up in a little bit. Uh, you can always subscribe to the channel, uh, justtalking.com, and uh, within that, you'll find our YouTube channel. Again, Eric, thank you so very much for sharing your time and a part of your life with us tonight. Thank you all.